All right, so now that we have our music cog added to our main.py bot, we can um, go ahead and start making some functions. So first of all, uh, what we want to do is basically our bot can be in multiple servers at once. So right now he's only in the Gerald the bot server, but I can invite him to other ones as well. Um, so in order to accommodate for that, we need to make a queue, like a music queue for every server um, so that he doesn't get mixed up. Because what you could do if it was just a single queue for the entire bot, um, you would be able to like play songs from different servers as other people are playing songs. It would be a mess. So what we have to do for all of our um, self variables is basically make a dictionary. Uh, and in that dictionary at the index of the server ID, we will put um, the actual variables. So for instance, um, we're gonna do self dot is playing, and we're going to make this a dictionary. And then, so is playing could be a Boolean, so either true or false. So we are going to have a, a dictionary here and at the index of whatever the server ID for this server is, we're going to say either true or false. So now we're also going to do self dot is paused uh, equals another dictionary. Uh, then we're going to do self dot music Q equals another dictionary. And then self dot Q index equals another dictionary. Uh, the rest are self-explanatory. Q index is basically um, how far along the Q are, you are. So if your Q index is three, then you're in the fourth song of the Q. So then we're also going to have self.vc equals another dictionary. And self.vc is basically the status for if the bot is in the vo is in a voice channel or not. And it's a property that will also allow us to play music or audio in the voice channels. Our first command here, so we're gonna do uh, commands.cog.listener. Um, and then we're gonna do async def on underscore ready. And we're gonna pass in self. So basically what this is doing is this is a function that will run every time the bot is rebooted. So whenever it's ready or whenever it's um, online, it becomes online, it will do this once. So in here, we're going to say for guild in self.bot.guilds. And that's basically just saying a, a guild is a server in discord.py. So every server that the bot has joined, we're going to do something. Um, the ID of the server is going to equal int of guild.id. So it's basically just taking the server ID and converting it to an int and then assigning it to this variable. And then we're going to do self.musicq at the ID. So that's at the index of the ID will equal just an array, an empty array that we will fill later. So the music queue is going to be a list of songs basically which is an array self dot q index at the index of an of the id will be zero because we're starting off at zero for the index um, and then self dot vc at the id will equal none and then self dot is paused equals self dot is playing equals false uh, and both of these will be at the index of the id and this is basically just assigning both of these variables at simultaneously to false because it's neither paused nor playing so this is our on ready command that's quite nice um now what we can do is we can do some functions that will be called but are not actually commands yet so first off, we're going to do the join VC command. So we're going to say async def join VC. Uh, and we're going to pass in self 
CTX and channel. So basically, this is an asynchronous function, so it can be called throughout, uh, like any time, basically, like it doesn't wait to finish the function to uh, do more stuff. Um, and we're passing in self, which is just the cog. Um, and we're passing in CTX, which is the context for whatever the message was sent. Um, it's basically a ton of information about the user and all of that stuff, whoever sent the message. Um, and then the channel that you want to join for the voice channel. What we're going to do is we're going to say the ID of the server is int of ctx.guild.id. So we're taking the message and we're getting the server from that and then we're getting the ID of the server from that, converting it to an int and then assigning it to a variable. If the uh, VC at this ID uh, equals none, or if that same VC is um, not connected. If either the VC is none or if it's not connected right here, then we are going to say self.vc at the ID equals await channel dot connect, which is basically just connect to the channel and assign that to the VC. If after we try to connect uh, self.vc at ID equals none. So basically we're saying if the channel.connect failed, um, await ctx.send uh, could not connect to the voice channel. And ctx.send is basically taking the message and we're responding to the message. Um, so this, the bot will um, write its own message and saying that it couldn't connect to the channel. So then we're going to return and else we are going to say, oh wait, whoops, we want this to be back here. So else for this first if statement, um, we're going to say this, await self.vc at id dot move to channel. So basically we're saying if um, if it's already connected to a channel, then just move to a different one. And there's our join VC function. All right, so now that we have our join VC function written in, we can now do the search YouTube and extract from YouTube functions. So basically these will just be used whenever we want to get the actual information from a YouTube video or find a YouTube video based on search terms. So first thing we're going to need to do for this is we're going to need to create two new variables in the init command. Uh, so the first one being the YouTube DL commands. So self dot YTDL options. And I'm just doing all caps because it's a constant variable um, equals. And then I'm making this and I'm actually just going to copy and paste it from here. And I will put this in the description. These are basically just options for downloading the video itself and self dot FFmpeg options is the same thing. It's the options for the FFmpeg, which is how you actually play the music. And again, I'm going to copy and paste the settings into here because they are a bit complicated. Again, I'll put these in the description. So these are YouTube DL options and these are FFmpeg options. We'll use this in this function. So going down here below join VC, we're going to come over here and we're going to do define search YouTube. And then we're going to pass in self and search. Then we're going to say the query string equals parse dot URL and code. And then we're going to pass in search query, oh, whoops, search query and colon search. So basically this search input is whatever link or search terms that our user will input. 
and here is our query string basically it's just putting it in a format that the program can figure out what the youtube video is so next we're going to take this query string and we're going to make another variable htm content equals request dot url op open whoops url open and then in here we're going to paste in this right here so basically for every youtube video you can see that up here there is a link right here so www.youtube.com etc and then there's also this random string of numbers and letters every youtube video has this random string to define what it is but everything beforehand before that string is a constant so what we're doing is we're just pasting in this into our uh, our string right here and then we're adding whatever the query string is which is this so the query string is basically getting the string of numbers and letters from the youtube video and then we're pasting it into a readable youtube link Hey, so this is me editing the video, and I kind of realized that I explained this in an incorrect way. It's not actually taking a specific video with that string of numbers and letters. It's really searching YouTube with the string of stuff that you entered in. So with all of the links or keywords that you entered in, and it's searching YouTube for a video that matches that. So it returns a list instead of a single video. So next, we're going to take this htm content and we're going to say search results equals re.findall and then we're going to pass in this for our first term and this is basically uh, parsing the same link that I was talking about earlier and it's just saying return the first 10 results. And then we're gonna say comma after that. And the second term will be htm content dot read and then dot decode. Oh, I spelled this wrong. Content, there we go. So now we have our search results, which is basically a list of all of the links to the YouTube videos, uh, or the first 10 links to the YouTube videos that come up when you either paste in a link or put in search terms. So with these search results, we're just going to return search results and we're only going to do from index 0 to 10. So we're going to return the first 10. Um, and that is all we need for the search YouTube function. Next, we're going to do define extract YouTube and we're also going to pass in self and URL and this is going to actually extract the information from the YouTube video so that our bot can play the music from it so first thing we're going to say is with YouTube DL and pass in self dot ytdl options as ydl so we're basically just using youtube dl and assigning it a variable and passing in the options try info equals ydl dot extract info from the url and set download to false so this will basically mean under normal circumstances it would try to download the audio of the youtube video to your computer we don't want that we want it to generate a link that can act as the same thing, but we don't have to handle all of the files. So we're going to set download to false. And basically what we're doing here is we're just extracting the info from the YouTube video and making a link out of it. Uh, this is the URL that gets returned from here. Um, and then for this try function, we're going to also do accept and we're going to return false if it's not able to extract the info. Otherwise, outside of this with function, we are going to return 
and then it'll be a big uh, dictionary. So first off, we're going to do link. Then we're going to do the thumbnail of the video. And then we're going to do the source, which is the link to the actual audio that our bot will play. And then we're going to do the title of the YouTube video. So first off, for the link, it is pretty self-explanatory. It is the exact same thing that we did up here, where we just added the standard YouTube thing to our URL. With the thumbnail, uh, it is actually quite similar in the, in the sense where we have a standard URL and we basically just add in the, uh, the random numbers and letters to it to get the specific URL for the video. Basically, this is similar to this in that the, you paste in the URL and it'll specify which thumbnail to get. Then we're going to say the source is taking from this info variable. The source is info formats zero URL. That basically just gets to the URL for the source of the audio. Then for the title, we're going to put in info title, which is also in the info variable. And that is our extract YouTube function.